Today we're making Marcella Hazan's spaghetti carbonara. Let's do it. <laughs> Very Italian way, you see? Hello, I've been following along to the pasta recipes out of this cookbook for a while now. The essentials of classic Italian cooking. Now we're gonna make her carbonara sauce and carbonara has either bacon or pancetta in it and eggs and it's creamy, there's Parmesan cheese in it. It's delightful. <laughs> And she says it's difficult to imagine serving carbonara on anything but spaghetti. You know what, I wanna read you this little bit here because it's actually quite interesting. An Italian food historian claims that during the last days of World War II, American soldiers in Rome who had made friends with local families would bring them eggs and bacon and ask them to turn it into pasta sauce. And how those classic American ingredients came to be transformed into carbonara has not really been established, but there is no doubting the earthy flavor of the sauce is unmistakably Roman. Shall we get to work? Okay, so we gotta make some spaghetti from scratch, of course. Those are the rules on this show. You know, you could easily just go to the store and pick it up, some dried spaghetti. Actually, I have some in the pantry over there, but that's not allowed while the cameras are rolling. So I've filmed myself many times now making Marcella's pasta here. And I wanna keep documenting it because I think the progression is very interesting because I started, you know, I just, a deer in the headlights, amateur hour, just trying to figure it out. So we've fallen apart. We have fallen apart here. Oh my God. And then with each video, I've just picked up a couple things, a couple new techniques, and I'm getting better and better. So I just wanna keep the good times rolling. So we're gonna start off with this 300 grams of double zero flour. On you go to the clean surface. Just wanna make that into a very secure well there, cause I'm gonna be adding three eggs. For every 100 grams of flour, you add an egg. One potato, egg. Two, three. So with the fork, I'm just gonna start drawing some of the flour from the wall into the eggs. There's no leakage coming out of this well today. It is fortified with the strength of double zero flour. Look at this thing. Just keep drawing flour into the eggs and mixing. It's starting to look like pancake batter right now. She also says you can start drawing the mound even closer together while you go. So like taking some of the flour, beating it into the eggs, drawing the mound in. So I don't need all of this flour. I'm just gonna take a bunch of it, move it to the side. Just keep mixing with this for now. Now I can use my hand, the fingers and my palms to uh, fully integrate the flour and the eggs. Okay, we got a personal best over here. I haven't even used my second hand yet. Well, with the fork I was, but not like, you know, that's a record. If I can press my clean thumb into this dough and nothing sticks to the thumb, we can move on to the next Kneading, we gotta move on to kneading. So just make sure the surface is kind of floured there and then I'm gonna just bend my fingers and with the heel of my palm, I'm gonna press it into the dough. Cool, then I'm gonna fold the dough in half and then a half turn, do it again. Do it again, do it again. After around eight minutes of doing that, the dough should be as smooth as baby skin. I really don't want to keep wasting plastic wrap with this step, so how about a Ziploc? I would like that to become much firmer. Just get that in the fridge. I summon thee, Chromio Alfredo. Welcome back. And with my pasta machine, I can only clamp it down. The the only place in this area where I can clamp this sucker down is right in this corner. That's why I'm always over here. Lovely. The dough has slightly rehydrated, which is normal. Split this dough into ninths because I used three eggs. If I used two eggs, it would have been into six, uh, but I didn't. So something so that this dough doesn't dry. Bowl me. Thank you. Just keep these ones in the bowl and flour up my pasta machine, of course. Feed it through the widest notch first. We'll start with wide first and then we'll kind of switch over to lengthwise. Keep adjusting to the next thinnest notch. All right, well, that is uh, my first one. So uh, yeah, they always kind of stink on the first try. At least they do for me. Uh, I need uh, my thing. All right, so I got the tree house over here and I'm just gonna let this one Kind of just hang tight. Firmly press down on my little dough ball. Let's go with the width first. Fold it three ways and again. Okay, fantastic. 
Keep adjusting the notches until you've passed it through to five. Stopping at five. I wanted some longer spaghetti than I was uh, making, so I combined some of the dough balls into, uh, instead of nine, I have five. I have this piece of dried spaghetti here. I've been using it as a kind of like a guide for my own pasta. Uh, I've been lining it up lengthwise, you know, pretty close. And then the sides here, I've been kind of straightening those out as, as well so that I can make my own of this. I have all this leftover dough, and because there's no such thing as like overworking pasta dough, I can make some more of these with this. Hanging to dry for like, I don't know, 10, 20 minutes. I think I'm ready to turn them into spaghetti. Feed them through the spaghetti attachment, no big deal. Here we go. It's a beautiful thing, it's a beautiful thing. Keep it beautiful. Okay, pretty beautiful. Just gonna kinda like, kinda sieve some flour on top of them and kinda just shake it off. That way they don't stick together and I can just put them back in the treehouse. Yes, cool. And then on to the rack. Hell yeah. I mean, as nice as it looks, I could look at it all day. I just need it out of my way. Ooh. So I'm just gonna keep it on the, the bar cart, right by the plant. Okay, so we're gonna move on to our carbonara sauce. Uh, this one only has nine ingredients. So yeah, it's not a whole lot to make this. Uh, look how nice that looks back there. Very important ingredient right here is uh, pancetta. I've never cooked with this before. And it is a uh, salt cured pork belly. That difference between this and like bacon is it hasn't been smoked. So um, this is a half pound of pancetta and you can see the skin that kind of like surrounds it. Uh, there's no mention in the book of removing it, not that I can tell, but my research online tells me to slice it off because it's gonna be too tough to eat if you keep it on and we don't want that. So quarter inch wide pieces, half an inch thick, got it. Lightly mash a couple cloves of garlic with a knife handle, enough to split and loosen the skin. Discard the skin. Medium high heat. Get a pan on there and around three tablespoons of olive oil. Four split garlic cloves. Yeah. Just saute this up until the garlic turns golden. A deep dark gold. Oh, that already smells amazing. I mean, that happened fast, but I don't want that garlic to burn, so I'm just gonna get it out. And I guess it's just to flavor the oil because we're discarding this garlic. But that's what she says. Pancetta into the pan. This is like a, whoa. This is like a half a pound worth. And we're cooking this until it just begins to crisp on the edges. Quarter cup of dry white wine, the Sauvignon Blanc. Let that bubble away, should take a few minutes. Take it off the heat. Let's focus on some cheese here. Pecorino Romano, I need a quarter cup worth of grated. Roop. And we're gonna need a half cup of Parmesan Reggiano. Two tablespoons of chopped up parsley. Bomi, thank you. And where those, uh, Whoa, good thing there's a shell on that. Two eggs into a bowl. This is what I'm gonna be dropping the pasta into once it's been cooked. Beat the eggs lightly with a fork. It's cheese time. Pecorino, Parmesan. Two tablespoons of the chopped up parsley and a very liberal grinding of black pepper. Needs more pepper. Pasta has dried out, it looks fantastic. Around five quarts, just under five liters of boiling water, dropping in the salts, and now the water needs to come back up to a boil. This isn't gonna take long, by the way. It's gonna be around two minutes for the spaghetti to cook. And here we go. One, two, three, there. Drain the pasta into a colander. Cook spaghetti into the bowl with the stuff. Okay, toss it rapidly. You know what I'm thinking? Probably could use a couple, couple tablespoons of this pasta water. 
Briefly reheat the pancetta with the pancetta and all the fat and oil. All of it goes into the bowl. Whoa. Holy cannoli. Let's toss it one more time. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So I have this thing in my head that I really just want to, I want to give it a try. Is this the time or the place? I don't know. We're gonna class this place up a bit. I got a carving knife and a ladle. And I don't know really what I'm doing, but I'm gonna give it a try. And we have to kind of like twirl it around a bit. I'll try one more time. Okay, and then that goes on. Maybe a couple more pieces of pancetta. Okay, I mean, somehow that looks okay. And then I'm gonna just grate on a little Parmesan. Boom. Order up. In case this doesn't look as good as I hope it looks, I got backup. This is more of a rustic approach. Maybe a little more of what Marcella had in mind with this plate. out of 10. That was sensational. So good. Yeah, it's just, uh, well, you just, you hope everyone's okay, right? That is just the most savory plate of food. That pancetta brings the saltiness. And then it's also like cheesy and creamy and peppery. Great pepper vibes going on in there. Really great pepper vibes. I guess because of the pepper, obviously, but the pecorino as well. So I could pick up that like white wine kind of flavor in the pancetta. It was really nice and unexpected and uh, it's just like some of the best pasta I've made so far. I only want to compare with my previous efforts and each time I do it, it's just leaps and bounds ahead of the previous ones. You just keep practicing, you get better at it. So that's great. Spaghetti was top notch, not expertly made, but just well made. This didn't take me that long and I made this spaghetti from scratch. So if, if you didn't do that, this would take, I don't know, like under half an hour, I guess. And that's it. That's all. This was Marcella and me. Buon appetito. Very Italian way, you see.